This brief video is designed to introduce you to making accurate characteristic impedance measurements on fine line PCB traces. Included in the video is a preview of the 6880S version 22 and the TRC Plus, which is an option for the SI8000 and SI9000 impedance field solvers. The enhancements in the 6880S and the TRC Plus are designed to improve impedance correlation when you're measuring on fine line PCB traces. The aim is to use the 6880S and the TRC Plus to ensure measured and modelled correlation. Included in the TRC track resistance calculator is now a TDR view, which gives you a, a, a stylized, idealized view of a TDR trace on a coupon, and it shows you how the measured impedance will be influenced by the distributed resistance along the trace. So here I've shown a differential pair on 3.2 mil line widths, and the illustration shows how that distributed resistance from the trace resistance of the copper trace will actually cause the impedance, the, the apparent impedance to, to lift over the length of the trace. However, the characteristic impedance of the trace isn't changing. Here what we're seeing is the effects of the DC resistance accumulating in the reflection on the TDR. And in order to get an accurate measurement of characteristic impedance, which is independent of, of length, you need to de-embed this uh, trace resistance effect that you see on the TDR trace. The TDR view is an idealized waveform, so we've taken out all of the interconnect aberrations and any of the uh, ordinary trace aberrations that you would see on a TDR waveform, just to show you the impedance, characteristic impedance, and the rising effect on the TDR trace that the distributed re resistance will cause. Until quite recently, with wider traces and thicker copper, the impact of DC resistance has been small enough that you could ignore this effect on the TDR trace. Uh, a model here shows differential pair, a differential pair with 8 mil line widths, and here the rise in impedance is only a, a, only a fraction of an ohm over the whole coupon length, small enough that it won't interfere with the correlation between measured and modelled impedance. But when you do have fine traces, the trace does rise up. And here's a screenshot from the latest version of SITS 880S, where we're using a technique called launch point extrapolation. And we've cleaned up the display to remove the typical test windows that you're used to in the SITS, simply to show the launch point extrapolation measurement, which is actually projecting the slope of the line backwards to the launch point of the trace, so we can get a good, good measurement of the characteristic, characteristic impedance minus the DC resistance in the trace. In this example, I've actually put a second point at the far end of the trace, and you can see that the impedance has, has lifted from 101 ohms, which was actually the target impedance we were aiming for, to 108 ohms. So there's actually seven ohms of DC resistance in this differential pair that we're removing by the use of launch point extrapolation so we can get an accurate correlation. I've put all three tools together here, the SI8000 with the um, predictions taken from accurate microsections and laminate data sheet figures for dielectric constant. And when you look at the 101 ohms and the 101 ohms measured on the SITS, and then you can see the projection of DC resistance on the TRC plus, you can see how all three join together to give you excellent correlation on fine line traces. In addition, in the 6880S, we've cleaned up the interface, so we've actually now got a section for fine line compensation. There's two methods uh, for fine line compensation, one called DC resistance compensation, the other called launch point extrapolation. They're both valid methods for removing the DC resistance effects on the trace. Some OEMs prefer to specify a DC resistance per inch, others prefer to specify launch point extrapolation. They're both catered for when you specify LPE, the resistance spec is drawn from the main specification in the SITS and you don't have multiple impedances to deal with as you did in previous versions of the SITS.
So what if you don't take into account the effect of DC resistance on TDR impedance measurements? You may find the TDR reading appears to be high compared with predictions. And some fabricators have drawn the conclusion that this is because the data sheet value for epsilon R is incorrect and maybe even tempted to goal seeking an ER value that will allow you to meet the impedance with a revised geometry. However, we know that laminate suppliers provide accurate measurements for dielectric constant and de-embedding the DC resistance allows you to better correlate the results without artificially adjusting the ER values, which can lead you down to some quite unusual conclusions. If you'd like a web-based demonstration of the latest version of SITS and the TRC+, please do contact your local Polar office, and the details are shown in the last slide of this presentation. Thanks for viewing the SITS 880S and TRC Plus 22 preview and the guidance it gives you on removing DC resistance from fine line PCB traces. If you've got any questions, we'd be delighted to help you. As promised, here are the contact details for your local Polar office.